All right, let's get this show underway. Hi, my name is Brendan, and this is Accidental Origin, your weekly writing web show. How's everyone doing today? I'm doing good. Things are good. Things are good. Making a lot of progress. Um, today's going to be a little bit different. I've been thinking a lot, and I spoke about this last week as well, about the things that I want to do with this show. And I do want to finish Fear the Siren. I really do. Um, I think it's a it's an interesting story, uh, and it's helped me grow a lot. I think, which is awesome. And those are all good things. But I don't want to get stuck in in a streaming rut of just doing the same thing every single week. Of you know, this week, if I if I was keeping going with with Fear the Siren, I'd be doing another day of of editing, working on new scenes and stuff, which is good, which needs to get done and will get done. Um, I'm 100% planning on finishing Fear the Siren on stream, and uh, yeah, I, I am. I'm going to do that. Um, it's made me realize that maybe doing all of all of the story on stream is not necessarily the most interesting thing to watch, but I wanted to show the entire process from beginning to end at least once. So that's really what I'm trying to do with Fear of the Siren. Um, but after that, I think I think we're gonna mix it up a bit and not do that sort of beginning to end as much. Though, uh, we'll see how it goes. My schedule is going to change, uh, hopefully in the new year, so I will be streaming more um, and that's, that's going to change it up a little bit about how this whole thing is going to fit together. Uh, the other thing, uh, I want to talk about today, uh, speaking of change is I'm going to be moving my office a little bit this weekend. Uh, yeah, there's some space that I'm not using properly, so I'm going to shift everything around a bit. And that's going to change how this all works and, and stuff like that. But that's fine. It's going to be new. It's going to be exciting. Um, I got a new, new hard drive. Uh, solid state that I want to install. And it's going to be different. Um, so I'm going to make a awkward segue, as I do best, into what I want to talk about today. And that's really kind of what I want to do today. I want to. I want to talk. I want to explore. Uh, I want to theorize and, and have have a conversation. Um, for those who don't know, I hang out with a lot of artists online, uh, on Twitch especially. Um, you know, I hang out with with uh, different different art communities. Uh, of streamers, uh, people like John Derek Murphy and Stevie Ray Duran and uh, Jonah Loeb, uh, people who I who I really like um, and have have taught me a lot about what it means to be uh, an artistic person, a creative person, to to pursue those goals. Um, so yeah, I, I hang out with artists a lot. And that's awesome. It's awesome to surround yourself with people who live the same life that you live, who do the things that you do, um, to a certain extent anyway. I mean, I'm, I'm a writer. I hang out in a couple writing communities, but I also hang out in a lot of visual art communities. I think there's a lot that we can learn as writers that translates from art, from music, from drama. There's, there's a lot of overlap. And I think updating our process and, and working on our creativity through those mediums really can help us grow as, as creative people. So, on that note, on Adobe the other night, 
Derek, uh, and excuse me if I'm if I'm misquoting this um, this anecdote uh, because I wasn't actually there, so I'm hearing it kind of secondhand. But I was I was there at the end, sort of thing. Uh, I was actually watching a baseball game at the time, and it, things happened. Anyway. The gist is, is that Derek asked me what, uh, like, how do I get past that blank page? How do I have an original idea? How do I, like, what, what allows me to get started on a project? Right? So I've been thinking about that. I've been thinking about that for the last few days, um, about about that question and what it, what it means to me. And I've been talking a lot with uh, people like Droni and uh, and Derek and Jonah and all them about creativity, about about growth, about all those those things that make us who we are. And, and give purpose to what we do. Um, so yeah. I mean, this feels very lofty to me at the moment, but that's, it's okay to be lofty. I am who I am, I'm a smart person. I, I like thinking, I like theorizing, I like expanding myself. So, you know, like, I want Accidental Origin to be a teaching stream. I want to learn. I want to teach. I want to have conversations. And I really think that I need to have one of those conversations. I need to break it up. I need to expand, change things, try things, fail, learn. Yeah. So. Been trying to transition for like 10 minutes. <laughs> it is what it is. But I'm going to flip up to the main screen here. And I have. I was looking at originality what it means to be original. Um, I love this photo. The knowledge times imagination equals originality. And I'm gonna come back to that. Uh, got originality from the got milk. Creativity defines originality. But it's also these quotes that I think really show uh, the, the diversity of thought on, on originality. Like, originality is really important, Jim Carrey. It is better to fail in originality than to succeed in imitation. Sure. What is originality? Undetected plagiarism. Interesting. Originality is a byproduct of sincerity. Uh, that's from Thomas Carlyle. There's another one down here. Uh, start the thing only you can start. Thomas W. Higginson. Originality is simply a pair of fresh eyes. C.S. Lewis. I hadn't actually seen this one before. Even in literature and art, no man who bothers about originality will ever be original. Whereas if you simply try to tell the truth without carrying two pants, how often it has been told before, you will, nine times out of ten, become original without ever having noticed it. That is powerful to me. Um... That 
Oh, it's interesting. Originality is the art of hiding your source. So, what, what does that mean? What does that mean for, for you to have an original idea, to be original? So again, at the definition here, I'll throw it up on the main screen. The ability to think independently and, creativi and creatively. The quality of being novel or unusual. Aspect of creative or invented works by as being new or novel and thus can be distinguished from reproductions, clones, forgeries, or derivative works. But, but originality is a, a, a cultural definition. It evolves, it changes. Um, talking about here, down in this section here, where in, in Shakespeare's time, it was common to be more like a, a, an admired classical work. It, it, it was it was more common to do something that was more derivative or or more adapted. Um, you know, so yeah. And, and this is kind of me doing during spur of the moment things right now, right? Like I didn't plan that much of what I was going to talk about today. I didn't plan uh, uh, my whole purpose out like I've done in the past. And I think that shows a little bit in, in my loose train of thought. But at the same time, I, I didn't want to do a ton of research. I didn't want to to show you what other people thought. I wanted to explain what I thought, the way that I approach it, the way that I get past those barriers. Um, I was looking it up and, and originality is, is part of a series of articles on appropriation. And appropriation is a very interesting thing uh, because appropriation is the use of a pre-existing object or image or whatever and using that to make something new. Uh, like I was saying before, I hang out with a lot of visual artists. Um, so there's a lot of con there's a lot of talk about things like photo bashing t of taking a photo to create concept art to, to use it to create a, a certain effect in your piece so that you don't have to do certain hard things that are unnecessary, like drawing rocks or sea or whatever. And a lot of people are like, well, you know, is that original? Is that your work? Is that plagiarism? Is that theft? Like, there's a lot of thought on that, right? It's, it's, a, hard, it's a hard subject. So my thesis for today, um, and this is what I said to Derek when he asked me that question, is I don't know if I've ever had an original idea. I, I don't know if it's possible to have an original idea. Uh, primarily speaking, um, we are in fact a collection of memories and experiences that make us who we are and those experiences will forever influence us and will continually influence us as we experience them. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if there's ever, ever such a thing, but I don't know if it matters in, in a lot of ways, right? I don't know. I don't know if it matters whether or not there is such a thing. So yeah. Um, and I and I looked at this and I and I love this whole section here. Uh, 
because it talks about things like artistic inspiration, uh, tributes, fan fiction, archetypes, um, monomyths, stock characters, plot devices, dramatic structure. Like these are all concepts that I've talked about in the past as being important parts of the writing process. Um, and I think that's true. I think that's 100% true. You know, it's weird, right? It's weird to think about ourselves as being unoriginal or, or uncreative. But I think in a lot of ways we are. Um, for me, personally, and the reason why I say I've never really had an original idea ever is that I think in, in what I call the blender theory or what I've, if we've termed the blender theory today, um, I've also equated in my head to a nuclear reactor uh, where in a lot of ways what I do to create an idea is I take a bunch of different ideas and I throw them together to create something. And whether that something is new or original is not the point. The point is that I'm creating something. Um, and that's a lot of what I wanted to say to Derek the other night as well is I don't think it matters whether what you put down on the page is original. Don't think it matters when you start to create because it isn't starting that makes the idea original. It's how it ends in a lot of ways. And I, that might not make sense, but I'll try it and, and reiterate it. it. It comes from a talk I saw Peter David do at a convention a long, uh, probably, oh God, like almost 10 years now. And what Peter David said was save your fan fiction ideas. Save your ideas for the, the, the people you'll never get to write for. Uh, he was talking specifically about uh, things like writing for Batman or writing for Superman. Because uh, he's a Marvel writer and, and he doesn't necessarily get to do those things, right? But you have ideas. You have ideas that relate to those characters. Um, he didn't specifically say fan fiction. Uh, I kind of added that into what he was the summary because I think it's very uh, it, it's kind of the same idea where he was talking about a, su a Superman story he wrote he came up with this great idea of a Superman story but DC was never going to publish it because it was potentially the last Superman story or a, a potential last Superman story ever right um, and the idea was that if Lois Lane and we could talk about female empowerment and female characters at, at some other point um, but if Lois Lane always needs to be saved by Superman how did she survive before Superman existed before Clark Kent, like, left small-town Kansas to, to become the person he was. How did she survive? And Peter David's thesis was... Superman, by being Superman... Is, is in a lot of ways... Changing the world in that people become dependent on him or people need more saving because he's there. Right? It's, it's, the ex, it's the escalation factor where Batman creates the Joker by accident, but the Joker is a response to Batman. 
and that sounded weird. But it's that thing of, of escalation. If cops get automatic weapons, then criminals get body armor and bigger guns, and then cops get more guns, and blah, 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 and it escalates, right? I think, in a lot of ways, superheroes are the same way. Right? So, my point is, is that DC wasn't going to publish... Well, my point is the story. DC wasn't going to publish the story that the, this idea that Peter David come up, came up with. So he changed it. He wrote it and published it in a science fiction magazine. Uh, as a short story. <laughs> hey, Ian. Uh, this is me being theoretical today. I, I needed a break from from doing the uh, the project I was working on, and I was having a lot of conversations this week with some of my artist friends, uh, visual art friends, and we we're talking about originality and ideas. Um, and no, it's it's not recorded. <laughs> it is recording, uh, but no. Uh, I'm talking to whoever's listening, I guess. The audience. Pretty much. So? So I, I don't I don't get your point. My peeps are usually pretty late and showing up. It happens. <laughs> but yeah. So Peter David was telling this story about this, this well, telling the story about the Superman idea he had. And, uh,. The idea was that you can create these stories for characters that you, you could never write for, and you can make them your own. You can make them original content and publish them and do things that are interesting studies, that, that explore characters, that explore things. Um, and for me, that was a huge, uh, that was a huge realization of of the power of writing, of what an author can do. Um, yeah. So yeah, today I am talking about uh, creativity. Uh, especially originality. And, yeah. Creativity and originality. So, uh, yeah. So, today... I'm going to try and give insight into what my thought process is, what I think about when I'm looking at the blank page, because I think it's important to discuss. Uh, people talk a lot about writer's block and 
uh, the inability to start, to start a story, to start a piece of art, to start doing a thing. Because they're worried that their idea isn't unique or their idea isn't interesting. You know what I mean? Pretty much because I want to <laughs> is, is the answer to why. Why not? What should I be doing? Sure. I can see that. That's a noble cause. So yeah, there's my blank page. And I didn't I didn't come up with an idea for what I wanted to write about today. Um, Cuz I wanted to show the the organic nature of what this is of this process. Sure, I don't mind doing that.
There we go. The African jungle was wet with human heat. Darren watched the, chimbo the children stumble through the trees. Gunfire erupted behind them. The soldiers weren't as far off as Darren had originally thought. Who said they were child soldiers? I didn't say they were child soldiers. But yeah, I wanted to, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, I wanted to do a series of these, of different, just putting things down on the page. I think that's 100% the most important step to starting to write is, or even to do art, is you gotta put your pen on the page. You gotta hit the key. You gotta put something. And honestly, I don't think what I just wrote is particularly good. But that's fine. You don't know that. <laughs> you don't know that at all. You don't know where it takes place. takes place in the 70s. That's a hard question, Taz. In the answer, yeah, the short answer is yes. The long answer is not really. Okay, fine, fine. I'll just save it. I'll just save it. Keep doing that. I have very much trained my body to hit Control S every single time. I stop. I stop typing. Um, I'm kind of just. I want to just put stuff on the page. I want to just throw ideas down there, no matter what they are, how good they are, whatever. I'm trying to to kind of talk about originality today, about, you know, the process of, of creating, of thinking. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've been talking, well, I've said this a few times now, uh, but I've been talking a lot with my art, my visual artist friends, and they were asking me, you know, how do I sit down at the blank page? How do I come up with something original? How do I create? And my answer to them was, I'm not sure I've ever had an original idea. Because I don't think I have. I think it's all... A long process of adapting, of of creating, of mixing, of blending, of stock characters and archetypes and thoughts and
I'm not trying to be good with the names. I'm just trying to put something down. The thing about it is, is there's nothing in this that can't be changed. <laughs> there's nothing in this that you can't make better. But yeah, exactly, exactly, Taz. A spontaneous splash of ink on the page. Yeah, just get something down. about ideas I often don't even name characters I think about them in terms of who they are and what they do and and what they are in the story like the main character or like uh, the villain or things like that of like the soldier or the musician or whatever Hey Johnny, what's going on? Well, for sure, and like, I'm not trying to, to really push the language. I'm just trying to put my thought down, no matter how cliche or silly it is. Because um, I agree with you, I don't like, <laughs> like, smashing it to smithereens is a super done phrase. That's not the point. The point is to put the idea down. Because like I said, you can, you can always make it better.
I like I like things about uh, creative people. I like reading and watching movies, like reading books and watching movies about musicians and artists and writers and stuff. So yeah, I really like that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's what I've been doing the entire time. Just taking things that Chad says and, and writing about it, writing what I think, what, what characters come out, what situations come out. Um, like just, and, and even a little bit further than that, of thinking of what what's the typical thing like what's the typical story moment of that you know like the the detective who sees the case that he never solved or whatever and throwing that down and then think seeing if i could <laughs> seeing if i could maybe turn that on itself of, of making it more interesting by giving it a twist or just putting down what i think it it should be whether that's cliche or not, you know, just, and I keep saying it, just, just putting it on the page and, and not worrying about it.
Uh, that's, a, that's a really good question, Johnny. <clears throat> I think, uh, and I've talked about this before a little bit, I think certain stories really lead themselves to a visual medium and certain ones don't. Um, and I think being able to judge that is, is an important skill <laughs> of sorts. I have definitely thought of adapting certain things to be a comic or uh, all that, but generally I have a straightforward idea of what medium I want to do what in. Um, it depends. It depends. I, I feel like when I work on uh, movie scripts or TV stuff or whatever, and, and that's what I studied in school was, was screenwriting. I think that stuff lends itself really well to comics. Again, because it's a, a visual medium. It's a, it's a visual way of telling a story. Whereas a lot of the stuff I work on in novels and short stories and all that tends to be better for that medium. It explores more inner thoughts. It explores uh, a little bit deeper below the surface. It's not as, as visual. Um, but I think that's just me. I think... I think you can totally do it. I think you can adapt stuff uh, really well. And sometimes adapting it is the best idea. Uh, can make things so much better. I was reading uh, not too long ago a thing on Steven Erickson, uh, who is a fantasy author uh, that I really like from Canada. And his original idea was a, a screenplay. He wanted to write a screenplay. So he was working with his co-writer and he wrote this crazy screenplay. And it didn't work. It was too much. It was too big. It had too many locations and characters and, and, and all that stuff. It could never be produced. It was never going to be produced. So what did he do? He took that and he wrote a novel. And then he wrote another novel. Uh, and I think up to now, I think he has 10 books in that series. And the ones that I've read, the first three or four, are really, really good. Um, so yeah, I think, I think adapting can be, can be a really, really strong move. Um, but yeah. I, th I think that answered your question. Which is good, because I was stalling a bit, because I didn't know what I was going to do for this yet. <laughs> I 
I agree. Um, I agree with that entirely, Taz. I mean, this isn't a super big project, but... Okay, so it's one o'clock. I'm gonna take a, uh, a five minute break, uh, go get some water and some stuff. But we'll be back. Um, and we'll do more of this stuff. Uh, I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying the silliness and whatever. Uh, I have a bunch of stuff beside me here that I wanna talk about as well, uh, books and things. Uh, so I will do that. But yeah, five minute break. I will see you all in a bit.